Hello and welcome to the interview here on France 24. Our guest today is Saad Mosseni. He's the chairman and chief executive of the Mobi Group. The Mobi Group is a media conglomerate which owns several outlets in Afghanistan, including Tolo News, Afghanistan's leading uh, TV uh, channel. Uh, this channel and other media outlets were created after the fall of the Taliban in 2000. And one, and for exactly a month now, the Taliban are back in power. Saad Mosseni joins us from London. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Good to be here. I just want to rewind October 15th. Uh, the world was stunned by uh, the Taliban taking power again in Kabul. Were you as well? Uh, August 15th. Yes, of course. Of course. Uh, we thought that there was a certain inevitability in terms of the, the Taliban coming back. But uh, the assumption was it would be a couple of months uh, after the Americans had uh, completed their drawdown. But for it to happen so soon and while the Americans were there was a big surprise to everyone. Right. Because, I mean, you obviously are well informed, well uh, connected. It seems everyone was taken by a surprise. Who do you blame first? President Ashraf Ghani for essentially leaving uh, suddenly the Biden administration, both? I think everyone. I think, to be honest with you, you, uh, you have to first and foremost uh, blame the Afghan government, uh, which systematically for seven years politicized the Afghan National Security Defense Forces. They alienated people around the country. Uh, corruption was endemic. Uh, the government was inept. They couldn't provide the basic services to most Afghans. There was a sense that uh, the government wasn't theirs. It was totally detached from ordinary Afghans. And of course, the Americans, what, what they did and the way they did it was, was eff effectively cutting off the Afghan national security forces at the knees. Uh, they withdrew support for the military. There was no contracting, uh, as, for example, on the servicing and maintenance. There, there were no contracts on, um, on logistics. Uh, planning and strategy fell by the wayside. There was no air support. It was, uh, it was uh, in effect, giving people a set of car keys and a car, but without, without any tires. It, it almost became impossible for the na national security forces to continue the fight. So I think you can blame both sides for, for, for this you know, monumental failure. Right. Uh, we're a month now since this uh, overthrow uh, by the uh, Taliban. Uh, Tolo News as of today, is uh, still on air. Going back to mid-August, did you think seriously that you would pull the plug immediately and why did you decide to stay on air until today? Well, I, you know, our assumption was that they would shut us down. Uh, I don't think we ever wanted to voluntarily leave. Uh, that's a commitment any news organization has. Uh, in an, any environment they're uh, operating in. And uh, the fact that they've allowed us for now, uh, you know, compels us to continue with our work. I mean, obviously, there are going to be some red lines and we'll see um, what the new laws dictate and if they issue any new directives or if their attitude towards immediate changes. For now, we, we seem to be reporting things as we used to report before. Uh, obviously, there's uh, there are some concerns and some nervousness uh, with certain stories, but we do get the stories out, which is the most important thing. Right, because obviously a new government is now uh, uh, taking its positions, and but there are no guidelines for uh, the media. You mentioned red lines. What are your red lines? Well, I mean, we have a whole bunch of them. We will, we'll, you know, we'll cross that uh, bridge when we get to it. But uh, we do have some internal red lines, and uh, and for us, um, crossing those will be very difficult for us. Uh, and as such, uh, we're watching the space, and we've we've been fairly blunt and honest with the Taliban as well that. Uh, um, the circumstances uh, are important to us, and you know. Uh, uh, you know, the environment uh, where we can operate is very important. What about uh, women reporting? Obviously, this has been a subject of discussions. Are you continuing with this? And uh, are you having problems with the Taliban because of that? And generally, uh, we, we have been OK. Um, and we are continuing with it. Uh, we've had uh, incidents where women have been told on the streets 
by some of the Taliban fighters that they should dress differently. But policy-wise, they haven't told us anything yet. Um, and we've uh, obviously we have continued to we've we lost a number of journalists, both male and female, who fled the country, took advantage of the evacuation uh, uh, of, of of civil society members and so forth. But we were also quick to employ new ones. So we have now a including female, female reporters. Uh, yes, all of the above. I mean, I think if pe people had the opportunity to leave, and they did, and and we also had the opportunity, well, we were forced to employ new um, journalists, and a lot of people came forward. I mean, uh, we were surprised by that. Uh, hundreds of CVs, including women. So we've employed a number of journalists, uh, some uh, presenters in uh, studio presenters, and a lot of journalists who are, you know, going uh, about their work like before, uh, doing vox pops, interviewing people, uh, filing reports from outside the office. Uh, so we, we're committed to that for as long as it takes. Right. Uh, what about self-censorship? Are you forced uh, to avoid certain uh, topics? I know on, on some of uh, your programs, like so soap operas, I understand uh, that some shows uh, are not airing anymore. But on the news side, are you doing the work you did before August 15th? We are. We are. We, we get the news out. It's just the way we probably would report it would sometimes be different. Uh, Nonetheless, uh, the, 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 what you would see is not that dissimilar to what you would see, uh, you know, you would have seen in mid-July, for example. So, yes, I mean, that to us is very important. That's uh, the integrity of the, of the network. Uh, it's important for us to uh, be truth tellers. You know, to, truth to power is what we, how we define our work and to cover all, all types of topics, uh, including ones which would... Um, not necessarily uh, make the Taliban happy. But, for example, we've discussed issues like uh, the fighting at Panjshir. We've discussed uh, uh, women's issues, the protests that we've seen in Kabul and uh, in other provinces. So the, 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 the topics that seem red hot and controversial, we have managed to cover nonetheless. Right. Uh, there have been uh, also instances of violence against uh, reporters, including uh, with your channel. Do you believe uh, that there is indeed a risk uh, that there could be uh, censorship, of course, but also violence? Or do you think this is uh, more uh, because uh, some Taliban fighters uh, might want to have uh, some uh, scores to settle and this is not a Taliban policy per se? It's hard to tell. Uh, it's very difficult to tell. It seems that the leadership, at least the media leadership, is not happy with the behavior of some of these commanders and fighters on the streets of Kabul and beyond, of course. Um, and But, you know, the, 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 the concern that we have is that uh, the, the leadership doesn't seem to have much control over these fighters. And these fighters have been trained to kill, not to police a city of seven million people. Uh, so, you know, time will tell if they can be controlled or uh, their ac actions curtailed or if they're going to, you know, bring in a new police force with new uniforms uh, that can police the city. So we're not sure. And we are concerned. I mean, sometimes our reporters do not want to go out. We've had two reporters beaten up. We had another one arrested a few days ago. Um, and, and, you know, they're not. You know, violence is not new. Even during the governments of Ashraf Ghani and Ahmed Karzai, we had reporters beaten up by the police. Um, it's not an unusual thing in Afghanistan, but still, I, I think in the old days, at least, we had the opportunity to uh, complain to the police minister, to complain to the prosecution, to complain to others. In Afghanistan right now, the only people we can complain to are the Taliban media folks. And uh, and then we hope for the best. And uh, we're not sure if anyone's going to get indicted or suspended or anything along those lines. Right. Uh, I mean, more broadly, I mean, this obviously concerns you with the, their uh, media people. Uh, but do you think that the Taliban should be uh, engaged or are you uh, afraid that the Taliban's of today are the Taliban of 1996? And it's not worth discussing with them because they're hardcore Uh, group and they won't talk uh, to people like you and won't let you operate. Well, of course we have to engage with them. Uh, they they control a nation of 38 million people. 
who are not just facing a humanitarian and political crisis, but are perhaps facing the biggest crisis of all, which is an economic one. Uh, unless you want the, you know, the, the people of Afghanistan to starve to death, you have to engage with the Taliban. You have to talk to them. And if there's an opportunity for them to moderate their policies, we have to pursue uh, these opportunities because this window is closing very quickly. And um, whether it's going to yield something or not, I'm not too sure. And of course, we have reason to be doubtful and uh, skeptical. But still, I think the world has an obligation to engage. Right. Uh, just a, as a last question, a question uh, you must be asking yourself every day uh, you wake up. Uh, are you considering a plan B uh, that is uh, moving out of, of Afghanistan and maybe continue uh, to broadcast from another uh, place, either in the Middle East or uh, Europe? Or is uh, your goal to stay in Afghanistan as much or as long as possible? Well, we'd like to stay for as long as possible. We're an Afghan network. We need to have that physical presence. Um, and we'd like to work with the, the, the current authorities as long as they respect freedom of expression and free media. Um, but also, you know, every business has, needs to have contingency plans, and we have ours. Uh, but, you know, at this juncture, it seems that, you know, they, 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 they would like for us to stay, and we'll see. I think we'll, again... We'll, we'll uh, deal with those uh, challenges uh, when we get to them. Saad Mosseni, I want to thank you very much uh, for uh, being with us uh, from London. And thank you for watching this interview here on France 24.